line is? Oh, I feel great about my group. Uh, you know, when you have four returning starters that played very solid football last year, and they're such good people and they want to get better. So we laid out to them the first day they got back here, they had a little paragraph about what we wanted them to do for my guys on a physical level, like how to get better as a player and then how to get better your body better. Like what could the strength coaches and the nutritionists do with these people to improve them? So either do this better flexibility, better lower body strength, more upper body strength, better this, better, you know, all these things. So we had a real good plan for each guy. We wrote it up um, and they worked on it tremendously hard and they care. So I see a lot of improvement in a pretty good group right now. Considering that last year they were more talking about how they could, they didn't want to be em embarrassing anymore. Like, how much further along have they gotten considering especially the season that they did have? Oh, they, they're uh, at a whole different place now. Now it's a whole different conversation. Now we're, you know, we're trying to take them to the next level, which is, you know, winning conference championships, you know, and playing at a championship level in all the games, you know, so and each guy playing at a level that they could be better. If you were second team all conference, what do I got to do to be first team all conference? If I was first team all conference, what do I got to do to be all American? If I was honorable mention, how do I get to second team or first team all conference? So that's the objective is for everybody to take a step and uh, they're very into that. They're very in tune to that, you know, and three of them, this is their last year. So, you know, they're really focused as most last year guys are on. How do I play my best football my last year at Michigan? How much of a different guy is John Runyon this year compared to maybe this time last year? Well, he's different in that he's confident. He's different in that he's, he's a better communicator because he's confident. People don't communicate when they're not confident. You know what I mean? Nobody that doesn't know what they're supposed to say doesn't stand up and talk. They don't say anything. So he's confident. He's communicating. <laughs> He's been able to evaluate himself on tape, and, and we had a couple of things we wanted him to work on, but he's, he's at a whole different place, you know, than where he was a year ago at this time because he had never started. Now we're expecting him to be one of the best players we have. With Juwan gone, any update on the battle at right tackle? Well, that's been fun to watch, and it's ongoing. I don't think it'll be resolved in the near future, but that's, it doesn't need to be. Um, you know, Andrew Stuber started the last couple of games for us of the season last year, and he was solid. And we have Jalen Mayfield, who didn't lose his red shirt, but played a little bit throughout the season, and we saw a lot of bright things in him. So we've had six practices, and three of those practices, Andrew's been the first team right tackle, and three of those practices, Jalen's been the first team right tackle. So I would say the reps are pretty even. And eventually, it'll separate itself by virtue of somebody will be more consistent. Both have very redeeming qualities, so we'll see where it goes. Um, but it's fun to watch because competition brings out the best in everybody. Um, not that there's not competition at some of the other positions, but that tends to be the one that's most focused on. But uh, yeah, time will tell, time will tell. But uh, they're not the same guy, so they're not like working on the same thing. They're different. So, you know, which one can perform the best and most consistent, you know? And that may be a very close call. I mean, that may go to the middle of August, you know? I mean, it may be decided sooner. But you, you just never know. I mean, time tells. I mean, they, they control that, really. How much do you weigh that Andrew has started two games, you know, compared to Jalen? He's played more. I mean, is that factored in when you make a decision? Or is it just going to be a little bit? Clean? A little bit. Um, but some of that was because we didn't want to lose Jalen's year. I mean, that was by default. We kept Jalen out of a couple of games to save the year. If we would have, maybe, maybe that we might have played it out different. Whereas I want to be, I want to be coaching Jalen four years from now. I know that. You know what I mean? And so, uh, so that that that's part of it. But yeah, we have some good video on Andrew, and uh, he earned the right to start in those games and. Even though we didn't win in either game, you couldn't go back and say he, he was a reason, major reason why we didn't. He, he held his own and did his job. Um, so, But, I mean, it's good to have a test in those big games, you know, of what someone can do. But 
you go against our defense every day, I mean, the slate is clean. What, what can you do against them? If you can perform against them, then you can perform against most any team we play. So once again, I mean, J Andrew got the start the first day. So the first day he was the starter. Second day, Jalen was. So Sunday when we practice, Andrew will be the starter. What was it? Uh -huh. oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What was the number one thing that Jalen you know, had to work on as a freshman last year? Where did he develop? Well, I mean, he, he uh, I mean, you got to remember when he committed to Michigan, he weighed about 255. Yeah. Yeah. And then he started adding weight and getting stronger. But to get to the point where you're 315 pounds like Runyon and Stuber and as strong as they are just doesn't happen as fast. So he needed to develop size, strength, um, high school techniques are different than college. High school players are different. So how to use, you know, how to get used to the new body, how to get used to the new size. Because I think last year, I mean, he's 307 right now. Last year, I think he was at 287. I mean, I don't know if there was many tackles starting in the Big Ten at 287 that were freshmen, that were true freshmen. So I, I think allowing him to develop the size and strength that you need to be competitive on a consistent basis. But we saw tremendous signs of him growing all throughout the year. So. We're just letting it. There's no sense putting a guy out there and then having having him not ready because you know he just hasn't physically gotten there yet. So just let it uh, take its time with him. We just took our time with him, and he's in a good place right now. You know, he's he's in a good place. I'd rather bring him along slow than throw him in there too soon, and then they get shell shocked, and then they're like overwhelmed, and then they lose their mojo because confidence is the number one thing. Everybody we got's talented, but. Honestly, the guys who believe in themselves, believe in their techniques, trust what they know, trust their training, and go play the hardest are the ones who play the best. And it doesn't mean that they're the most talented. Most, usually it's just a, experience is what some people call it. I call it confidence, you know, because sometimes it is an experience. It's just confident in how to do your job. Caesar was, Caesar was talking about a lot last year as sort of being a quarterback for the offensive line despite his age, kind of an underclassman. Mm -hmm. What did you want to see from him in the offseason, and have you seen him make those strides so far? Yeah, he is a quarterback for us. He, he, the things that he does are amazing in terms of his communication of how we run our offense. A lot of teams have their quarterback do that. We take a lot of load off our quarterback and have him do it. Um, he's very good at that. So he is a, a underclass quarterback. Now he's not anymore. Um, I wanted to see him work on, you know, pulling in space. I wanted to see him get better at that. I could tell he's better at that. He got leaner. We asked him to lose some weight and get a little leaner. He has. And then work on his pass protection. And then within his pass protection, you know, just some footwork things I want him to get better at and hand placement things. So all of those he has definitely worked on and is better at. Everyone's talked about the, the offense being faster, uh, obviously huddling less. How does that uh, impact the offensive line or, or does it impact the offensive line? Well, it can. The one way it uh, impacts the offensive line is we may run 75 plays a game instead of 55. So that's 20 more plays a game. So within that though, Every play, they get to save running 14 yards because seven yards huddle back and seven yards back up. So that's 14 yards. So I said the trade-off is we're going to run 20 more plays, but you, uh, you know, of those 75 plays, you've got 14 yards less yards you got to go. So it made sense to them. I, I really don't know if mathematically you know, that's <laughs> accurate, but sounded good. But that's what I've always said. I mean, last year was the first time I was part of an offense in the last 14 years that huddled. So I mean I haven't been no I've been no huddle offensively since 2003, except for last year we huddled. So we're back to what I was at all my other stops, no huddle. So I, I get it, you know I get the no huddle, I get the whole component. I'm very comfortable in this offense, very comfortable in all the schemes that we're doing. A lot of them are the same. There's just different pieces to it, some different formations and all that, but. Uh, I think the linemen have adjusted well, you know. The biggest thing in the huddle is, is that you teach them, you know, things that to listen for in the huddle that give them clues as to what might happen by, you know, formations and motions and all that. Now um, they have to get that from signaling, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How has uh, ONU distinguished himself in the off season? Well, Big Mike has slimmed down, he's leaner, 
He's quicker. Oh my gosh, is he moving? He's that's he is moving so well. It's just uh, playing better with his hands, understanding little details, practicing better. It all starts with like his attention to detail and uh, in meetings. I mean, it just he's improved in area every area. But his off season was great because he he really trained hard. He really had great workouts. He's leaner. How uh, much weight has he lost? I don't know if there's an exact number, but he's definitely, I think there's 15 pounds at one point, maybe there's 20, but the body composition, mm -hmm. I mean, his, just cause he weighs a lot. I mean, his muscle mass and density is as good as anybody's on the team. It's just, he's a big human. So <laughs> within that, you know, then everybody puts a weight on it. So what did his paragraph say coming in? I mean, did you give that to him before winter conditioning or before spring ball? No, 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 like July 9th, or Ju January 9th, okay. excuse me, so January 9th or 10th, yeah, like the first day they came back from the bowl game to school, mm -hmm. we had school like on a Monday, and I think we had a team meeting, and I think that we gave it to him then. And was that something you had said to him in that, that you needed yeah, to Yeah, yeah, but some, and... you know, just some of that was how to get leaner, how to train harder, how to be in better condition, to run, it, because uh, if he can play it, at the highest level of intensity, wow, is he talented. I mean, there's his ceiling is so high. And uh, now he's getting some details with that. He's got, so it's not just I get tired now, I don't use any details. He doesn't get tired, he practices harder, plays faster, and he's, the details are really, they're clicking for him. Yeah, when, there's, when the things that we need him to do, like use his hands better, a good first step, play with good pad level. If he plays with good pad level, has a good first step and uses his hands, He's, he's unstoppable. I mean, he really can do whatever he wants. It's amazing. He's just got to consistently do that. On Harbaugh's podcast this week, you said that Ryan Hayes had taken one of the biggest steps forward from last year to this year. Where yeah, I'm really proud of Ryan. Yeah, that we did say that on the podcast, and I meant it. Um, think about Ryan. He came here as a tight end. He played tight end, defensive end. All of a sudden, he walks in a room with me and the offensive line. Like, whoa. He's like, whoa. And, uh, you know, we were, we were – uh, we, we don't cut anybody in the slack in there. I mean, we work, we have details, we have high demands and all of that, he just worked through that process and now he understands the O-line, he understands the techniques he, and he's gotten bigger and stronger. I mean, he, I think he weighed 260 when he got here. Now he's in the 90s, 290s. So now when he does what he wants you to do, what you want him to do exactly the way you want, there's actually, you can see results. At 260, he can do exactly what you want. There's no results. He's not moving anybody. You know what I mean? Too big and too strong of opponents. Now you can see those results. And in long wingspan, so his pass protection has been really solid. And he's improved in the run game because he's stronger. And he's just playing with better football fundamentals, base, footwork, hand placement. Um, so he's been, his growth has been tremendous. But you knew it would because there's a lot of potential there. And then just the transition from thinking like a tight end and then all of a sudden all these little details, all this all the line stuff, this lingo, this language we have, this, you know, intensity, and you know, all that. It's different, you know. So he, he's, he's made a, a huge change, you know, because he's easily in our two deep right now, you know. So, and, and I'm proud of him for that, you know, because it wasn't easy. It's not easy for anybody, but um, he, he made that crossover in one year, and he's headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. How's the rest of the two deep looking right now? It looks good. Yeah, I mean, the two deep right now would, you know, be you, you have that battle at right tackle, and then we have uh, Joel Honiford and Andrew Vastardis battling at right guard. And Joel's improved a lot. I mean, he's had some injuries and some illnesses that had set him back. You know, last year he had mono for most of spring and had an ankle in the fall. And I, I don't know, I think some other things. Vostardis, um, you know, was earned scholarship and he's rotating in there. He's Spinellis is at center, backup center, and he's real solid. Chuck's the backup left guard. Chuck's doing a great job there. And then Hayes is the backup left tackle. So that's our two deep right now. And uh, that's a solid two deep. And we're, we're moving the ball with both groups. So I feel good about that. Mm -hmm. you, and, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry, you know this personnel 
really well after a year with this team. Is it the right fit with, with Gaddis' offense? Do you think the, the personnel matches what he's bringing in? In terms of my guys or the whole, the whole offense? offense? Whole offense. And your guys, obviously, specifically. Oh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Like, because we have a lot of good pieces. We have a lot of good skill pieces. We have the O linemen. We're doing the same things, just the formations are different. Mm -hmm. A little bit different in the huddling and stuff like that and not under center. But we're doing we're doing a lot of the same things. But then you have receive you know, we have multiple receivers that have some what you would call high potential. We have a quarterback who played in a spread offense and I mean it's tailor made for his skill set. Dylan's learning it and he's doing a good job, you know. Uh, Joe Milton's learning it. But they have skill sets that match this. The tight ends and running backs, you know, so I think we're great. I don't think there's anything that uh, we're missing that you need to be speed and space, spread offense, no huddle. I don't, I don't think, like, hey, we, we got to go recruit some of these. I, I don't think we're missing anything, you know. So I feel like we can, we just got to get good at this. The, the thing about spring is when you do some new things, you got to find out what's – Shea best at in this offense, and then we'll focus on that. What's our tailbacks best at? What are our tight ends best at? You know, we knew what they were really good at in the last system. This is different. What are they good at? But that's what spring's for. So not every day is just running what they're good at, pushing the envelope to try some new things to see if we can get good at other pieces to this offense, you know? Because like you said, there's, I've been in it with four head coaches and different offensive coordinators, and I've been the offensive coordinator at two places running this offense. So there's not much of it that I haven't been around. And uh, Gaddis has been in some different offenses that have been doing this. So he has perspective from the different places he's been, Penn State, Vanderbilt, Alabama. Um, you know, Ben McDaniels, same thing. So Ben's doing a good job with the quarterbacks, you know. I mean, he's a – football guy, smart guy. I mean, he has a, a nice person to call on the phone every once in a while to talk about quarterback play, you know, that he can re <laughs> bounce ideas off. But he knows what he's doing. I mean, it's not like he needs to do that very often, but that's good, you know. Um, Sharon coached in the spread offense at Central before he came here and at Louisville, so it's not foreign to him. So I think we're in good shape, you know. Uh, staff's working well together, everybody you know, it, it's been a good, good deal. I mean, it's going in the right direction. Yeah. So I, I'm real pleased with that. So. We have time for one or two more. Angelique looks like you're I just, I was just curious. You know, you're talking about the play call coming in, obviously without the huddle. So Shea's obviously getting the, the play call. How yeah, they signal the, so they, they signal the plays in. So the offensive line, the, so Caesar would be reading it as well, or Shea's. Yeah, they, yeah, they're, everybody looks at the signals. Okay. Yeah, everybody on the field is looking at the signals, getting the signals. All right. And then there's a lot of people saying that they're Caesar looking. Everybody's, no, no, no. Okay. They're, yeah, they're all. But there's a lot of people signaling. There's a lot of stuff going on. Some people are decoy. Some decoys, people are right. real. There's the whole <laughs> gamut. You can just look at other teams that do it and see how it. Right. So it'll it'll be so no one can figure out who's doing it. But it, it's uh, it's good. You know, it's just a way to run a play every 10 seconds faster if you can or whatever. We're not trying to go like two minute offense. We're not trying to do mm -hmm. that, but just not trying to snap the ball at three seconds to go every play, you know? <laughs> and not that we tried to do that last year, but I mean, just when you huddle, you know, and then you run up to the line and you get all set. I mean, you're just trying to give yourself a little more time to run these plays. And then when you do go two minute and you do want to go fast and you change the speeds, your system's already in place to do that. So going to two minute offense and hurrying up is just doing it faster, not like a whole new system. You know, like, so I think the linemen have liked it. I think they enjoy it, you know, making up the signals. We got all kinds of signals going on, you know, so. <laughs> uh, anything else? <laughs> Any? It's curious. Okay. Yeah, no. Yes, but, Brett, you know, it's good. I mean, it's, it's a signaled in system. And so everybody, so yeah, I mean, so I don't want to have one guy just know the signals and everybody else. What if he, you know, breaks his shoelaces, I say, has to come out. Then, you know, so they all know. 
they all know and then they talk and they, they, what they have now 